So what do you ask the man who adapted Out of Africa for the screen, Kurt Ludke, also a writer, journalist in his own right? What would you ask about a picture like this? The first thing, maybe. I, because I'm such a hopeless Meryl Streep fan, <laughs> I probably would ask something about Meryl Streep. So uh, everybody already is nodding their head like crazy. Yeah, do it, John, they're saying. Okay. Is she temperamental? Is she easy to work with? What? She is the absolute essence of good manners. I don't think the picture could have been made just as a matter of the stamina and the logistics and the difficulty of the project uh, without Merrill and her immaculately professional behavior. She's just wonderful to work with, uh, unusually so. Did she either want to or did she eventually contribute aspects of her role to the script? Uh, she had a number of, uh, she of course is, is her job is to create the character. She is blessedly intelligent and had a number of things, suggestions to make about the script, particular speeches, attitudes that Karen looks in the character that she's playing might hold. Uh, she was very good to work with. Now you've said that you love this book. Yes. You love the writings of Denison generally, or Karen Blixen. Can that love sometimes become a detriment or an obstacle in maintaining detachment towards the adaptation? Well, I, I don't think that it was that I'm capable of being detached about it. Um, Sidney Pollack, the director, said early, um, one of the problems you have here is that you're in love with the character that you're writing about, which is certainly true. So I don't think that I was able to maintain very much distance. Happily enough, um, film and screenwriting is a collaborative process, and I was working with uh, Sidney. So he was really in an editorial uh, role, and he was detached where I could not be. Mm -hmm. I know it's the collaborative nature of film writing that really does attract you. There's a certain security and opportunity in collaboration, isn't there? Exactly. Uh, it's, I hate to admit it, but the fact of the matter is you don't have to be as good when you're collaborating with bright people as you'd have to be <laughs> if you were working alone. I don't know many writers that would have that kind of humility, though. It's not hum humility that's at issue here, it's just accuracy. Were there favorite parts of the book that you had to leave out, but it broke your heart to do so? There were parts that had to be left out because they just wouldn't translate well to film, but it didn't break my heart because it was clear that they wouldn't translate well to film. Well, which brings up the question that for any writer to make it in this business, I guess you, you can't be in love over much with anything that you do, can you? It's <laughs> difficult. I mean, you'll certainly pay a price for it. Tell us about your work with Sidney Pollack. How did that come about? Sidney and I had done a previous picture, um, Absence of Malice Together, and somehow in that process uh, became friends and have stayed friends. And the script work on Out of Africa was difficult enough that I think if we had not been friends, I'm not sure that... Uh, the professional relationship would have survived. Mm -hmm. I, don't, I, I always would recommend anybody wanting to take up screenwriting to read Merle Miller's book, Only You, Dick Daring. Rewrite, rewrite, rewrite. Mm -hmm. Name of the game. Is that true? It certainly is in my case. Um, most, and most of the pictures I know are, are not filmed until they have been through four, five, six, sometimes a dozen drafts. I want everybody to take a very good look at this man because you've done some gutsy things in your life, including changing your career at the age of 38, I guess. Rather than going for the security, you changed. Do you want to talk about that? I had gotten lucky uh, as a journalist, rather young, and wound up too soon with what was probably for me going to be the best job that I would have ever had in journalism. And if I had worked to retirement, I would have been in the same job for more than 30 years, and I just think that 30 years is too long to do any one thing. So I was happy in journalism, but thought uh, it's just time for me to do something else, and screenwriting became it. Mm -hmm. Which is now going to be your chosen field for a while at least? At least for a couple of years, yeah. yes. If you were to suddenly find yourself in a similar situation where you're thinking, I'm restless, or I want to change, or whatever, what would be next for you? I don't know. I didn't know when I started getting restless in the newspaper business. I certainly didn't know that I was going to wind up writing for film. Mm -hmm. And I don't know what will happen the next time I get restless.
when people come to see Out of Africa, uh, it's maybe unfair to ask you this, but is there something up there on screen that you are inordinately proud of and would like to say, that's me, that's the best I've done? Watch it closely. Not in a direct way of mine. I, there are two things where I'm pleased that uh, the script came into being so that these people could work. The design of the picture done by a man named Stephen Grimes is extraordinary. It's one of the most attractive and accurate pictures I know of. Meryl Streep's performance, I think, is extraordinary. So to the extent that the framework for them to work um, resulted from the script, that I'm very pleased with. In working with these marvelous actors, they've got to have lines to say, and they're lines that have not been provided us by Karen Blixen. I, oh. yeah, I <laughs> would not uh, trust writers who talked about their favorite lines. That seems to me to Good be... Good point. Good point. Now, out of Africa, when you first approached it, at any time did you think it would make an interesting film, or did you just not look at it that way years ago when you read it? Years ago, before material that really told us about Karen Blixen's love affair became, a, before that material became available, I thought the book was charming, but there wasn't enough story in the book. It's a memoir, and there wasn't enough story there to make coherent film of. It's only now that we have the biographies that people have done the research uh, to tell us what the actual relationship was and, and what transpired that we have enough story to make a film mm -hmm. of. Flixen says in the book that the wonderful thing about dreams is that they are beyond your control. Now, when you started writing this script, did it begin to grow and burgeon on its own at times? Out of your control, in a sense? I don't think so, no. I mean, I was writing a real life that had a beginning and a middle and an end. Um, and my ability to invent was limited by the facts. So it was a pretty well-controlled piece because the story that we're writing is essentially true. Now, finally, what have I not asked you that you would have asked as a journalist? <laughs> I don't know. I don't know what Make I it a strong it. lead. This is something as an editor you've always had to say, make it a strong lead. What's a strong lead into Out of Africa? To go see the picture, um, take your handkerchief. <laughs> Thank you. Kurt Ludke, man who adapted Out of Africa for the screen. And from New York City for KCTV5, I'm John Tibbetts.